guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day. We have our first kind of very mini workshop to kind of show people kind of what we're about when it comes to the project management game board. So the first thing is we're going to practice an online event and ensure the activities, instructions, and discussions that we have work. Our process is we're going to spend a little bit of time going through Miro skills. I think everybody's been on a Miro board at some point or another. We're going to do a little bit of an exercise that we'll follow through later on um, about sweet potatoes. And then we're also going to go through an exercise um, with the priority triangle that will leverage some of that and, and start to highlight some of the things that we do on the project management game board. So what we're going to do is I'm going to split you into breakout rooms. And we're going to work on a sweet potato. So you'll see in your different area that you need to find a sweet potato in your breakout room. There's five of them in each room. Pick any one that you want. What you want to do is select from above there. There's a whole bunch of different elements that you could decorate your sweet potato with. Eyes and lips and legs and arms and, and all of those kind of things. Um, so I want you to, to build your own custom sweet potato. Pick any one that you want and click on it to edit the text, add your name. So when you get down here, you'll see a sweet potato. You double click on that text and in goes your name. Okay. Then what you want to do is select from above there. There's a whole bunch of different elements that you could decorate your sweet potato with eyes and lips and legs and arms and, and all of those kind of things. Um, so I want you to, to build your own custom sweet potato. And if you want, you can copy paste if you run out of things. Um, and then we're gonna take a look at your creations in a couple of minutes. So what did you think of our little sweet potato guy? Well, having a ringer there definitely helps when you're not used to the platform, but it is, you know, I don't use Miro very much, but it was pretty intuitive to use as far as like the workshop going into it. It took that stripped away a lot of like potential anxiety from worrying about the tool and just having some laughs and fun dressing up a potato. Needed to do. And it was tons of fun. Yeah, I've done this like four times now and it's still good. <laughs> yeah, I've always found it pretty intuitive. I've spent a decent amount of time. Um, I still find it just overwhelming knowing that there's like, it's an endless board with so much to do. And I know I haven't even touched the surface of it, right? <laughs> like even an exercise like this, you could easily turn this into something that's like not just a fun exercise, but it's contributing towards brainstorming and stuff as well. So if this project's going to exceed, you're all going to have a, to work together and become aligned to stakeholders. Now it's time to see how we can get this project ready. Okay, so again, what we'll do is we'll just go round the board and assign the role and just be a little creative and say what you think might be the implications to that triangle. And I'm willing to sacrifice on time as well to make sure we're keeping our costs at the right price point. So I'm gonna agree with our fearless project manager that um, scope and quality is going to be number one and um, we're going to work hard to keep that cost down for our customers why don't we all want the same things what's wrong with you all that, was... that or we need to fire everybody that disagrees with the majority <laughs> <laughs> who's got the biggest title right now uh <laughs> i think i do maybe the vp be no, I think I would at, at the, the chief potato officer. Have you been involved in a project that was having things pulled this way? In that we're not in alignment was the worst that could happen. So that's what we do with the priority triangle is show you how to take all of these different requirements with your client and reconcile them so that we can actually get those six five six little voices to all be on the same page and and in, instruct your project and, and how are we going to um get this thing kicked off in the uh, appropriate way and then the second way that we use the parade triangle is when there are change requests if you're actually executing a project then um, it's time to go back to these priorities and see if that change request has any material effect on those priorities because that's if, if everybody, because usually what ends up happening 
is you have a whole bunch of C-suites that are pushing on time, get this project done, I want to get to market. Um, and you've got the frontline people that are trying to push quality and trying to do a good job, and those things will end up being in a natural conflict. But at least this is a tool and a technique that now gives you the negotiating power to sit down with those C-suites and say, fine, here's where we're at with all of these things. But if we want to keep the quality of the product up and we still need your time to market, then here's what's going to cost us. It's funny, but isn't that, it's so true, right? It's exactly what we're trying to do here is give enough to really sink that knowledge. Like seriously, when we started, I was like, hmm, how's this going to earn out? And then at the end, I was like, holy crap, every time, this is how it's going to go. It's just every time. So let's get ahead of this and think about it that way. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. absolutely it, John. Also, like it's already super relatable. And like, it's these things that are like, I know we've gone over this so many times on different projects, but it's just like, oh, this is a short workshop and it's already, they're good reminders of like, yeah, these are good exercises to do. And yeah. it's cool to see it being done in, in a virtual space. <laughs>